So by January of 1999 in Massachusetts, there was multiple, multiple testing going on. Nine disorders were uh, identified in the newborn screen. However, it was also evident that some babies were left out of the mix. These babies, uh, this is an example of a baby with glutaric acidemia, Samantha, uh, with uh, repeated encephalopathic episodes and dystonia left really uh, terribly, terribly uh, 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 damaged. But this is Samantha when she was uh, only four months old, perfectly normal newborn. So glutaric acidemia was a disease that could respond to uh, early neonatal therapy with prevention of the clinical complications, if only it could be diagnosed in the newborn period. Now, um, it, it wasn't uh, uh, through a lack of interest in expanding newborn screening that newborn screening early on was not expanded. The, the techniques just simply were not there. Mary Efron here in Boston, along with Dr. McCready, uh, developed a uh, chromatographic assay that could be applied to the filter paper newborn blood specimen uh, in an attempt to in expand the disorders that were identifiable in newborn screening. And this is a, 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 a picture of a chromatogram uh, from Dr. Uh, Efron and her colleagues' uh, paper. Um, that uh, illustrated the fact that by this technique, one could I could show a great many different uh, amino acids in a single in a single run. Um, and in Massachusetts and in uh, several other places, urine screening uh, was uh, an attempt to expand newborn screening. Uh, in Massachusetts, for instance, the uh, mother was asked to uh, get a a dried urine specimen from the diaper of the baby when the baby was three or four weeks of age and send it into the state lab and that urine, dried urine specimen was, uh, was uh, tested by paper chromatography and again you can see a number of different uh, amino acid elevations identified in a single assay. So uh, theoretically this had the advantage of allowing for more uh, disorders to be identified or early on in the newborn or just beyond the newborn period uh, for, for, for purposes of, of early treatment, and hopefully prevention of clinical complications, and also would allow for a number of different disorders to be identified by a single assay. Uh, so it got around this business of having to have a, an assay for each disorder as the Guthrie testing uh, required. Um, however, the problem was that this was not very effective. Uh, many of the disorders that were diagnosed by urine or blood chromat chromatographic screening were benign and others um, uh, were perhaps serious, but there was no treatment for them. And the kinds of disorders that needed to be identified uh, for which there would be treatment that, would, that were serious and for which there would be treatment that would prevent the complications were not covered necessarily by this type of screening. And then a few years ago, came on the scene something that really met uh, the needs of expanded newborn screening, and that is the, the biotechnology tandem mass spectrometry, or MSMS. -MS. We know it today as tandem mass spec. Um, it's a machine, um, basically uh, using computerized technology and, uh, uh, and mass spectrometry uh, that works beautifully. And the great advantage of tandem mass spectrometry is that with a single assay, one can get uh, uh, profiles that uh, uh, can indicate a great number of different disorders. Uh, there are two major categories of profiles one gets with tandem mass spectrometry, uh, an acylcarnitine profile that will indicate uh, organic acid disorders and fatty acid oxidation disorders, and there's an amino acid profile that will indicate a number of different amino acid disorders, the most uh, prominent of which, of course, is PKU, but a number of other amino acid disorders as well.